Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friday live stream. So uh, quite a day already, right? We've seen about uh, $200 billion lost out of our uh, market cap. And uh, I think there's more, more pain to be had. So before we go and talk about why this is and what's going on, all that good stuff, I just want to make something crystal clear today, which is I'm not here to tell you to buy the dip. I know everybody will talk about buying the dip and you have to buy the dip and you have to buy this dip and buy and buy and buy. But you're at some point, you're like, I'm all dipped out. So today, let's just relax. Maybe we just don't do nothing. Maybe we just take a look at what it actually is and make a plan moving forward. Not to be pressured, but uh, this is kind of normal stuff. So let's just jump in. So if we take a look today, and of course, you may notice that uh, here's the thumbnail for today, masterfully done by my team. <laughs> and uh, it's very accurate. I mean, this is exactly what's going on. And of course, we will probably slip down a little bit more, but uh, to anybody's guess, but, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had the same thumbnail and it was the tagline was lower for longer. And it's not surprising as time has gone on that that's exactly what has happened. Now, I'm not here to say that the predictions are the end all be all. They're actually quite worthless, but there's some rules that we have to follow. And you don't have to follow them, but these are my rules and they're underneath me and they're five. And I think most of them know it's not going to go over. Um, any of them anymore, because I think we should all be right where we're supposed to be at and understand these things. So let's just take a look at what's going on in the market. So today we're uh, market caps around 2.1 trillion. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if we dip under 2 trillion. We might go to 1.9 or even lower. We might stay here. We might go up. It's anybody's guess and everybody's guessing. It's all just a bunch of educated guesses. But it's the long term of where things are going. And I'm still 100% sure at some point we will actually increase and we'll have a pretty big, massive bull run. Is that going to happen tomorrow? Is that going to happen in 2024? Is that happening in 2025? Again, anybody's guess. What I'm just telling you, this is what's happening today. Bitcoin's down 3%, Ethereum 6%, BNB 6.7%. Solana, they're not bad. 1.6 actually held up pretty well. And across the board, I don't even tell you this because you know this, because you've already seen your, you've probably already seen your portfolio. But if you're here and you're new, which I kind of doubt you are new, but if you are here, and this is actually a good refresher to take a look at, there are some things that we can check out to make sure that this is a, uh, pretty much a normal occurrence like what we're talking about. So what I did was I took historical data from, from CoinGecko and you can download that. I don't know if you knew that, but over at uh, CoinGecko, if you want to download like any historical data, like we'll take Bitcoin or something like that, go to the max. See right here, this little icon right here, you can download this data in the CSV or an Excel file. And I, what I did was I took that and I stuck that into chat GPT and I said, hey, show me from 2019 to today, a 10% drop or more in 24 hours. Just want to see what, what the data shows. And coincidentally enough, I knew it was a good amount, but it's actually 10% pullback, which as a reminder, today in 24 hours, our pullback has only been 3.4%. Actually, it was around 5% at the, at, the, at the worst of it. Over seven days, we've had 10%. 14 days, 30%. 30 days, 20%. I'm just saying for a 24-hour time frame, I said, show me the 10% drops. And there's 15 of them. And this isn't just because of the uh, Cervasa sickness. This was a lot of different instances that actually where it happened. And at that point, I can tell you with 100% assurance, there was pretty big panic because like, wow, 10% in one day. Again, we only have 5%. And people, I think, are flipping out now. It's not uncommon. So if you're in TradFi, uh, welcome. Congratulations. You're going to do really well if you stick around. But, uh, you know, 10% may be pretty harrowing to you. But to us, we call that a Friday. So in June 28th, it was actually down 14%. September 25th, 2019, it dropped 10%. Then March in one day, that was during the Cerveza sickness, 35%, which is the most extreme. I don't know if we're going to get another pandemic. <laughs> we're close to a presidential election, so I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, but it keeps happening. September 2021, this is in the, uh, I mean, the massive bull run here, 2021, February 24th. And then May 13th, 
This is during the peak of the bull run between April and November. It dropped uh, 12%. May 20th, another 13%, and so on and so forth. And you can see that 15 times. So if you're worried about today and you're 5%, uh, don't be. So again, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what's going on. So why did this happen? Well, mostly it's because there's more buy <laughs> there's more sellers than there's buyers. That's really what it comes down to. So first of all, this just happened uh, July 5th, which would be today. Uh, this is from the Mount Gox debtors. And it states on July 5th, 2024, the rehab trustee started to make repayments in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to some of the rehabilitation creditors. Through a part of the designated cryptocurrency exchange in accordance with the rehabilitation plan. I got to tell you, I've been hearing this since 2017. If you don't know, Mount Gox was actually a major, major hack in 2014. I wasn't even around back then. But imagine this, you've waited since 2014 to get some of your crypto back and you're just about to get it back in 2014. You know what the prices were in 2014 for Bitcoin? Let's find out. I'm actually curious myself. Let's take uh, from here to there. At the very peak, oh wow. November 30, 2013, Bitcoin was at a thousand dollars. Today it's at 55,000. And I know some people will say, ah, oh, those people won't sell. They're going to diamond hands. No, they're not. No, they're not. I hate to tell you this, but some of these people are going to sell. Now, this is in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. It's not all, all being dumped at once. But just be aware this is going to happen. So this is new. This is something that hasn't happened. But I will remind you, people will say, ah, well, you know, Bitcoin hasn't gone through this, hasn't gone through that. Bitcoin went through a pandemic. Bitcoin has gone through wars. Bitcoin has gone through mild recession in the, the Cerveza sickness. Bitcoin has gone through 0% federal funds rate all the way up to 5.25% federal funds rate. Bitcoin has gone through monetary policy as far as quantitative easing when we were doing nothing but money printing, and it's gone to actually a reduction in quantitative tightening. So all these things that we talk about, it's like it's just happening again and again and again. Quite frankly, I get kind of bored with, with, with talking about it, but I think people need to hear it. So there's that piece. Also, miners. Now, miners themselves, this is a great piece from uh, Wu Blockchain, and it was uh, the mining hardware electricity cost rate. And you can just see right here, I love this piece because it says the break even Bitcoin price for the top Bitcoin miners. What do you notice? Well, you notice that the break even price for Ant Miner is only 39,000. So they're keeping their rigs on, right? Ant Miner is 43,000. That's a break even price. Avalon, 48. Ant Miner, 51. But then we start to get to here, 54. When we get to Ant Miner S19K Pro, what's Miner and so on and so forth, you can see that the break even price for these miners is pretty damn high. So, what do you think? If they've got some old rigs in these mining operations, what do you think is happening? Well, miners are probably selling. And that's just par for the course. So, you're going to have a sell pressure of miners. You got sell pressure from Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash being laid out by, of course, uh, the rehabilitation program for Mount Gox. And let's not forget, and this is just something that's interesting, I thought, Germany. Germany, uh, they're selling off $2 billion, I believe, worth, correct me in the comment section, $2 billion worth of Bitcoin that they had confiscated over the years. And they're just now dumping it, which I got to tell you, it's not bad timing. I mean, they could have dumped it when, you know, whenever they actually accumulated it. But right now it's pretty good. They should have dumped it at 73,000, but they didn't. And here they are. But I found this article interesting that Germany is dumping their Bitcoin. At least they're moving Bitcoin. Looks like it's selling. And it states that the MP is urging the government to stop selling Bitcoin. I think this is a key piece because there was talk. This was started all firstly by uh, President candidate and former president Donald Trump, as he talked about, is using Bitcoin as a strategic reserve currency. So the MP of Germany is saying, hey, let's stop selling this Bitcoin. It's contrasting with discussion in the US where Bitcoin is being considered as a strategic reserve currency. Now, if this actually happens, I'm not saying it is. But I'm saying it'd be very foolish to sell right now. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying this is what's happening. So in recap, Germany selling, miners selling, Mount Gox selling, there's your sell pressure. And of course, there's other people that are taking profits. 
there's other people that got into the ETF that, uh, well, actually, no, I, I take that back because I don't think that uh, you can trade ETFs now, can you? Because we're, especially in the United States, the 4th of July, I think the day after, I'm not for sure if the markets are open, if they're going to be open today. I don't think so. Correct me in the comments. So if that's the case, I mean, overnight, this is where we're at. So once the ETFs open up, if it is on Monday or today, expect more sell pressure because people are going to panic. That's where we're coming from. So now we have that piece all taken care of, and I can't tell you what to do, but let's start talking about seriousness, a plan of what to do, where we're gonna go. And if you think about it, this has already been foretold. I think most of you are here and you understand that, but the question is then what do we do moving forward? Well, here's what I say. First of all, let's take a look at time and wristbands. This is Ben's website in the Cryptoverse, great site. Links in the description. And we can see where the risk bands are. Of course, this is all over time. It's actually not that risky for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is currently in the 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 risk band. What I like about this is it'll lay it down by days. Like when it gets super overheated, it's only been 18 days in the entire existence of Bitcoin. That'd be a good time to sell, I think. 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, maybe that's a good time to sell. Maybe you never sell. I don't know what you want to do. But right now, we're over here. We're just over here. We're just over here. So if you're thinking about selling your, your Bitcoin, I mean, you can. Just not for sure if that's... I'm definitely not going to do that myself. Let's take a look at some alts. Let's take a look. Actually, let's take a look at the total market cap if we're risky. Well... The market cap is currently in the 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 range, which is actually quite high for what we've done. Now, remember, since January of this year, we've had some pretty massive price appreciation. I think these are normal pullbacks, and I think people are selling, and that's just how it is. I think they, you know, they were smarter, they were better at this. They might have sold maybe more to the top, but whatever. So 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 for the total market cap. For the <laughs> altcoin market cap, it's actually less risky, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. So to me, what this says to me is that, okay, not a great time to sell. Maybe it's a more of a chance to accumulate. Again, not telling you about the dips. I'm just saying this could be good. How about Ethereum? Ethereum right now is in the same risk band as Bitcoin, 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. What about, I'm not going to do BNB. How about Solana? Solana is actually up there, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. How about Cardano? Cardano is, I think, one of those screaming buys, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Maybe there's something to be done, to be said there. I think it's going to do just fine. Like I said, in the bull market, everything pumps. But uh, when you're in these risk levels, and it's pretty low, I know no one wants to touch it right now, but I'm just saying, it's pretty low on the risk band. And you can go over a ton of them. There's a link in the description. You can check out Ben's website. I'm not going to steal all the information that'd be kind of a, a jerk move so uh that's all we have so there's the plan right there maybe you can use time and risk bands also there's another website it's called coin go live and one of the things i always like to look at is how far away are these different cryptos from their all-time highs because when we see these pullbacks these dips you probably want to think to yourself okay well which ones are being the most resilient which one's the most resilient and we can see that Bitcoin's doing pretty damn good. I mean, 25% away from its all in mind. Now that's quite a quite a, a dip, that's very true, but 25%? Look at ETH, it's 40% from its all time high. Uh, USDT, no one cares. BNB, 33%. Solana is 50%, 50% from its all time high. It's at 129 today, 259. I mean, I know people love Solana, but <clears throat> that's quite a drop. However, there's worse. XRP is down 87%. Never forget. <laughs> Doge is down 86%. ADA is down 89%. AVAX is down 83%. Tron, 45%. And in the top, you know, if you look at the top, let's see, the top 20, you know which one's doing the best? Toncoin. It's only down 16%. I know people are going to give me a lot of guff. Rob, you keep talking about Toncoin. Look, I did a video yesterday. It did very poorly extremely poorly. Nobody wants to hear about Toncoin, apparently. But I'm telling you, I am telling you right now, it's going to be big, and I'm still buying it. 
You don't have to. I'm just saying. And there's that. So you want to take a look at those things. Coingolive.com. I think there's a link in the description. If not, I'll put it in there later. But uh, yeah, which are the ones that are the most resilient? We can see that just going down. This is not looking good. Wow. Wow. Hold on. Bring this up. Oh, it's like even Caspa's going down. 27%, 88% for Ethereum Classic. Who buys that? Stellar, 90%. 51% from OKB. Arbitrum, 74%. Filecoin is down 98% from its all-time high. Sweet Mary and Joseph. That is disgusting. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that's beating ton? What the heck is Fast Token? Fast Token is... Zero point, it uh, hit an all-time high. So congratulations, Fast Token's the winner. Rax is actually the winner, whatever that is. So yeah, just saying, risk versus reward. So there's that. And then also, uh, the other part of the plan is this. I know no one wants to hear this now, but I think we should start to think about these things as time comes on. And one of the things I like to think about is the exit strategy and the point. And for, for Everybody who's here is like, you know what? I'm never leaving. I'm with you. I'm never leaving too, but at some point I maybe want to take some profits. There's a reason why on these days like today, the people that are very calm are probably the ones that either just don't really care too much or they've taken profits along the way or they're like, eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter because, you know, I have a plan. People that have the plan are usually the ones that are most pretty kosher and just chill. For me personally, I've always said this, and we talk about this on the rules, take profits. Nothing wrong with taking profits along the way. And I, and I tell you this, and I'll be honest with you, for everybody who's watching this video, whether you're watching it now or in the future, just know that I will dump on you. I will dump on you hard when certain targets get hit. No one will tell you that, but it's the truth. I will take profits and I will dump on you. And we talk about this link in the description when I'm telling you when I'm going to sell 80% of my crypto. I'll never be fully out. It's got to be these, these hodl bags. But at some point, out of all this time that you and me have been accumulating, we've done the hard work, have we not? Do we not buy the cryptos and the products that we believe in to prop them up so they can lead themselves to greatness? And what are we doing? Well, we're taking all the risk. We're taking all the risk. And as everybody's selling on us right now, even today, like I even bought this morning, they're dumping on us. We've been getting dumped on <clears throat> for three years now. Yeah, roughly. Three years. Is that okay? It's okay with me? Dump all you want on me for three, four years, five years, whatever it takes. But at some point, I will dump on you. And especially, I'm going to dump on the people that get in there new because you get Bitcoin and crypto at the price you deserve. Having said all that, I need you to stop listening to people that say diamond hands forever. Uh, if, if you want to hold on to Bitcoin forever, that's cool. If you're like, I want to give it for my kids and my grandkids, that's great. But for me, and I think some people, maybe it doesn't fit into their plan. And everybody is different. There's a massively different plan from a 20 year old who's in college as opposed to like a 70 year old who's living on social security, right? Massively different. But if you're one of those people like me and I'm like, hey, maybe you should take some profits. I talk about this all the time. I talk about it on the channel and I, I would tell you this, please know, take profits or I will dump on you. This was March 31st. And what did I do? I took profits and everything dumped. And then like, you know, for some reason I get people like, eh, you know, you shouldn't do that. And then like, bro, are you still making predictions? Is anybody listening, reading your posts? It's not predictions. At some point you just do this. And then I just, I've been talking about this for quite some time. And I think at some point, maybe you should develop a strategy that works for you to take profits whenever that actually is. You can start with that link in the description, the video where I'm gonna take 80%, maybe take a look at those indicators and go from there. And that's it for today. I just wanted to kind of bring everybody together and just, make people realize that this is a normal occurrence. We probably will go lower, but if we are lower, is that the worst thing that could ever happen? To me personally, I think this is actually good 
uh, as time goes on. And do I think we're going to drop? Yeah, probably so. I do think that those Mt. Gox people are going to dump on us, and I am ready for it. That's it for today. So look, if you liked today's video, probably didn't though, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Just got to tell you the truth. That's just how I see things. But uh, that is it for the news portion. If you want to stick around for a little Q&A, which I see a lot of questions. We'll go over all those things. I'll answer the questions the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. That's it.